Welcome to the Mojo Market Report. Here's your hosts, Dave Sturgio and Chris Gucci. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode and edition of the Mojo Market Report right here on a Monday. It is Monday, May the 15th, 2023. And of course, as always and forever and ever, Dave Sturgio, Chris Gucci are your hosts of the Mojo Market Report here this morning. Uh, rough weekend, uh, I would say. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed their Mother's Day weekend. I hope all the moms got spoiled out there and everybody was taken care of and the breakfast and beds and the brunches and all that good stuff. Uh, how was your mo- uh, legendary? Which, by the way, you 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 in the text, non-responsive text is just, it's it's so embarrassing at Should this I point. Should I say, okay? Yes. Or Bro, reply. I used to make fun of people that used to text me back okay to something that I already knew was okay. I would be like, dude, I don't need... I literally said, text. yo, be sure to tell your mother I said happy Mother's Day. Okay. Because last I year... Did. I last did. year I did on her uh, her Facebook wall, and she didn't read it for like four weeks. <laughs> so I, I did. Like, I did tell her. She oh, okay, got good. it in real time. Good, good, I was good. actually standing right in front of her. Perfect. Anyway. So I so hope Dave said happy Mother's Day. <laughs> and she's like, oh, what a guy. What a, what a swell human being. Uh, you know who's not a swell oh, human being? wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I forgot to tell you. She said thanks. Oh, <laughs> Done. All right. Like, that's Great. how that works. That's all that, that that's all I really wanted. Uh was a simple thank you. Um anyway, so we go from one really good human being in Chris's mom uh to not a so good human being. Or you know what? I, I don't really know how to break this down. I'm not in the room. I'm not in the head of one John ja Morant. I don't understand. We're gonna get to the playoffs in just a minute because obviously I have plenty of gripes about Friday night's uh, New York Knicks elimination. But when you look at a guy like John ja Morant. It seems to me that the dude just can't get out of his own way or or he's just trying too hard. He's trying too hard to be something that he's not or something. I don't know. Like It just doesn't make sense to me why you would continuously do the same thing after you did the whole sit down and everybody's like, oh, you know, I'm going to be a better person. And it's just like, oh, okay, cool. Well, then you did it he's again. He's got a circle full of complete clowns that's up to and including, I think, his father at this point. Um, I know that his dad's been every bit a part of his entire basketball journey up to and and including him sitting on the uh, court side. And for me, what I look at, what I look at, what I see T Morant, I see him partying on the, uh, you know, in in the front row. And then his son gets, I wouldn't say caught, but he's in the club on IG live. This is two months ago. It's not like he's had, uh, he, he was in an inpatient rehab for this, right? This is a thing that they've already dealt with. Um, they asked him after the season. You, he had his opportunity to step up and say, you know, it was my fault. I did a lot of things off the court. And honestly, I feel like he shied away from that. He said, on the court, I'm fine, but all, I, got, I got a lot of off the court issues. It's like, no, they go hand in hand at this point. When you're a star in the league, you're a leader of the team, you're the two seed in the West, and you're nowhere to be found deep into the playoffs, uh, I'm blaming you. And now you're out of the, you're 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 out of all the uh, anything that you could do with the Memphis Grizzlies at this point you can't do anymore. Right now they suspend them from all act- there's no uh, way. team activities, and it's not like it's going to just linger through the off season. It's gonna it's gonna linger into next season. There's no question about it. He is going to be punished again, and it's got to be th- longer than the last one. You know, it's crazy because you you said that it you know depends on what uh, the people that are surround you or whatever. Like I noticed that like once the gun was flashed on the on the, the the video went down quick like the guy dropped the camera almost on purpose like bro what are you doing like you just got in trouble for it. so maybe they are smart enough to Look, it but maybe maybe, jo- maybe there is no maybe there is zero repercussions that come from it because they have n- no real avenue to do so if they come to find out the gun's legal but what what I think is the police are going to investigate. I don't know if the police are going to investigate. I don't know, man. Look, we understand the gun laws was. are different in every state. And I don't everything even like know that, where but... he was, but I'm a, I'm imagining that the NBA is investigating. That might mean <laughs> the police investigate. They want to know, you know, let me see the gun. Yeah, well, I'm imagining that Memphis is tired of this crap. But, but like, I don't you know, know I mean? enough like, about the legality behind it. I just know that as a role model, as trying to do what you want to do with your life, you're in the NBA, you're not a rapper, you're not a gangbanger. Yeah, he's, you're but, you're a star in the NBA. Bro. It, it just bro, seems like it. it seems, hire somebody that was in the Marine Corps and hire another guy that was in the Navy SEALs and have them carry your guns. That's what I You would know what's crazy? But, um hey. and I'm just saying, you know what's crazy? It seems like you know, when Des Bryant was was a cowboy and he, you know, just not he never flashed a gun, but he just continuously just put himself in bad situations. Like the Cowboys gave him extra security. Like, yo man, these guys are going to roll with you. Like, you might want to consider that, considering yeah, your investment I, in John Morant me, might go down I don't the, think, the I don't think that the players are really all about that. Because no, they, they have the co- NBA and the team kind of into their personal lives. 
You gotta do something, man. I like, this guy's a star in the league, and he's so damn good. It was they already gifted. have they already provide the enough of, of that. I yeah, think the guys just that just don't take advantage of it. Yeah. Well, again, from that to <laughs> from bad to worse, the New York Knicks are bounced uh, on Friday night, as predicted by one Chris Gucci over here. Says it was going to be over. Look, they they gave him a run. They they really did throughout the course of the game. Um, they were down early, up early. You know, it was back and forth you got throughout. Their asses beat. Not really. Not not really. I, I mean, feel like game, the effort was there. Um, it definitely didn't resemble what they put out in the garden, clearly. Brunson, again, goes for 41. You know what I mean? Like, So this dude has literally put the team on his back. I- I've been singing R.J. Barrett's praises for the last couple weeks. Um, be it the playoffs, he was you know 20 points or more every game. Um, but he went one for 10 from the field. And clearly in the playoffs, when it matters and it's game six, you got to hit those shots. And and he wasn't hitting the shots. They were getting open looks. They were open looks, which was even worse. Um but yeah, so anyway, Jimmy Butler and Co. Uh, are moving on to the Eastern Conference I Finals. If I Dibbs can't believe gets fired. it. Uh, who? Dibs. Well, there are many changes I think that are needed uh, in New York, and not I shouldn't say many. There, there are a couple that are just like jump off the board. Like you have Evan Fournier on the bench. Goodbye. You have uh, Derrick Rose on the bench. Goodbye. And it was great having him because Derrick Rose was a pivotal a part of the two year ago team when uh, Randall and Ham were doing their thing and got to the playoffs as a four seed. Uh, so those two guys are gone. What do you do with Julius Randle? I, to me, I think he's stunting the growth of certain players around him, meaning R.J. Barrett, meaning Obi Toppin. I think those guys could flourish without a Julius Randle in the lineup. I don't know what it's going to cost the Knicks to get rid of him because I don't know if anybody's willing to take him on. There, there's, so, player, there's teams that will definitely take on Randle. It's just that they're not going to get anything significantly good back for him. They're, they're going to have to pieces. package they're a gonna, lot. It, and look, there's the free agent class is not that great. Um, the trade, What you got to do is you got to go search the West right now. You got to go search the West and say, all right, is there anybody pissed off out there? You know, is there anybody that wants to just uh, is disgruntled? And I, I heard this today on Bo- uh, Boomer Size. I'm saying it. Like, is there anybody out there in the West that just don't want to play with their team anymore? Have probably gone on record and saying, I'm here for life and I'm blah, blah, blah. But like, they're not winning. Like, the first person that jumps off the charts for me is a Dame Lillard. I don't, like, I don't know if it's a possibility, but maybe, right? Um, the other guys that are, that, that could, as far as having a big, you know, Mitch Robinson, he played well, but you know, you put him on the line, he stinks. Unfortunately, I just think at this point, you know, I'm Dame is one of my favorite players, if not my favorite player in the NBA right now. I don't know that you're going to get a guy on the wrong side of thirty that's going to go make a difference going forward. How many? How many? You need to upgrade from Julius Randle, and that's all you're really trying to do. Is Dame Lillard right now better than Julius Randle? Yes. Yeah, but where does he fit in the rotation? If you got Brunson and R.J. Barrett, and you're talking about stunting, stunting. Uh, Barrett's growth. You put Dame Lillard in there. R.J. Barrett. You know what's crazy? Bench. As you, uh, as I mentioned, R.J. Barrett again. Look at that draft class, dude. Uh, the Knicks are winding up with the gem and the steal of the first round. John Morant's going to be out of the league before you know it, and Zion Williamson can't get on the court. All of a sudden, that guy that fell to was R.J. Barrett. Or we took R.J. Barrett. Who went oh, after him? hundred uh, percent. But maybe they knew a little something, something about John Morant. I don't know. But well, no. I all I know that. is this: he's on the court and he's playing every night. So whatever. I digress. Uh, but in any event, the Knicks. Changes will come. I don't know if Tibbs make his. I, you would assume they play for the All guy. All the great coaches that have gotten fired over the last Did you see how many weeks. coaches? There's just a sweep I'm of coaches. Even if you kind of like Tibbs, there's some real good options out there right now that I would maybe be considering if I was the Knicks. JJ Redick. Well, no, I mean, he, <laughs> he, he needs more experience to come coach the Knicks, I think. Um, but in any event, the Heat move on. Um, or some experience. Right. He has none. Also on Friday night, another series came to an end uh, as the L.A. Lakers are back in the Western Conference Finals, 122-101. Uh, LeBron, 39-9, and another unbelievable performance out of him. Another 20-rebound performance out of A.D. So it's just like, again, we said it a million times going into the playoffs, those guys are hot, they stay hot, and the Warriors are bounced, okay, bounced. Uh, Draymond Green is one on record and saying, like, uh, you know, they didn't let us win another championship. You know, like, he was just kind of making tongue-in-cheek jokes about it. But, but, you know, outside the Lakers, we'll talk about the Lakers in a second, is Dub Nation kind of finished? Like, is that, like, like, as long as Clay and Steph are together, that consistently screams – Warriors for yeah, me. Yeah, like the you Splash know? Bros or whatever. Right. But so, like, is Draymond on the I think the Draymond's going to come back because I think what he's done down the stretch this year mm. is shown that he's not going to get a big deal somewhere else. And he's got a player option. So 
he's going to get 27 or 30 million, something like that, if he opts in. I can't see him opting out of that. No. At least to stick around for one more year with his guys. I think Jordan Poole might be on the outs. I think there could be other guys that are going to be traded. I think they're going to try and keep those three together. I don't know that it's the best idea. I think Draymond's kind of hurting that team at this point. Mm. You can make the case that I'm wrong. Um, when I say hurting that team, maybe they're just not there anymore. You know, it's it's not like Draymond's necessarily hurting the team. It's just that this bunch is too old, and they've kind of gotten caught up to it in a sense. And these were the two oldest? I, well, I don't know this by actual numbers, but it felt like the Warriors and the Lakers facing off at each other were the oldest teams going in. There's or at just least other teams that are primed the oldest right players. now, and they're, they're just better. They're you know, Look at the Nuggets, look at the Lakers. I don't know that they're going to be able to make any significant changes. With the roster they have uh, contractually, well, you're going to get rid of Jordan Poole. I don't know that you're going to replace him with a better player. Mm. You're losing that player. There's other guys on that roster that could step up. I, I agree with all that if you're making that case. But I think Golden State, at the very best, is a playoff team again next year, but they're not going to really – uh, so no contend. threat. No yeah. threat, actually. Look at the West. I mean, are the yeah. Nuggets going to get worse? The Kings are going to get better, you would think. Uh, what are the Lakers the Grizzlies, gonna be like next year? Whether they look, you know, with a John Moran or not, like they got better. Uh, Oklahoma City was get playing to see well. A full, a full year with You're going to get a LA, full. Uh, Oklahoma City gets their Russell. boy back. So it's like there's a lot of teams out in the West that can just kind of dethrone these guys for good. And I'm not just saying like this year. So we have our Western Conference Finals. We'll get into that in a second. But. Last night, yesterday, game seven, right? You would think, you would just think that the teams would show up, right? The Philadelphia 76ers decided to leave their talent in Philadelphia because a 112-88 win, a 24-point win by the Boston Celtics, led by Jason Tatum, went off last night for 51 points, and he propels the Celtics to the Eastern Conference Finals to take on the uh, aforementioned Heat, 51 points. My man went 17 for 28 from the floor. He was in his bag last night. And now you can kind of segue. I mean, there's not much to say about the Sixers other than did you hear about what Embiid said? Embiid went out and said, look, me and me and James can't do it ourselves. Like, No, I, I watched the entire interview. Did he say it? Like, Or did they just really peel that out? Yeah, they really peeled that That's one out That's a of horrible thing. Because like, if first, I see a headline, I'm like. He started like, it by saying, like, you know, it started off by saying, yeah, we have to do more, meaning the two stars. But obviously it's a team effort. We all, it was a. Completely, the quote was completely taken out of context. I love the media. <laughs> Misconstrued. I love the media. And B did nothing wrong there. Um, they love to make a big deal about it. And even Dame tweeted, like, what are you talking about, bro? But it's like, <laughs> no, no, that. no. Watch the entire interview. Dame, shame on you. You know better. Um, so, in any event, the Sixers are bounced. They're going to be scrambling, looking for more pieces next year. It was all the third quarter. Year. They actually showed up. They just left it at halftime. The, yeah, the third it was, quarter, they, it got, was they scored 10 points in the third. Ugly. 30, ugly. Th- they got outscored 30-something to 10. Is that what it was? Yeah. Oh, my God. All right. I got to check that because I'm just now I'm actually curious. So if I go to the old box score ski here, uh, 33 to 10 in the third quarter. Oh, my God. They actually outscored them in the fourth because um, they were just trying to make a comeback. But anyway, Celtics do their thing. They're on to the Eastern Conference Finals. Now, we have two conference finals officially getting underway this week. We start in the East with the Celtics in the Heat. Is this heat miracle season kind of coming to an end? They take the Knicks to six. The Celtics, look, they battled with a better team in the 76ers. They're both battle-tested. You know, they both went six or seven. So these teams are both, uh, you know, tired and just whatever. We'll see. But when you look at the series on paper and Tatum continues to do what he's done, Jalen Brown consistently showing up as well, do the Heat have a chance to, to knock him off here? Based off of coaching and all the role players that we've now discovered. They definitely have a chance. I don't think it's a great chance. I wouldn't be surprised. Remember, the Heat knocked off the number yeah. one seed Bucks. The Heat so. knocked off the Celtics a couple years back, I think, in the bubble as well. well. Here, ready for this? Same bubble teams. Same bubble fi- Final Four. Oh, yeah. How do you like that? There you go. Crazy. So I am right. They yes. did knock them off. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that matters. You know, it's been a couple years. The teams are kind of similar. Yeah. You know, there really hasn't much been turnover on either team. Um, I think even the guys that have gotten to Miami are now out, so it doesn't really matter. I think it's going to be a good matchup, better than people might think. If you're thinking the Celtics are going to blow them out every game, and just I don't think that's going to happen because I do think the, the Heat are just too well coached for that. But it's hard for me. Like right now, Vegas thinks the Celtics are winning it all. You know, they're like are they the odds favorite. on favorite? Yeah, even over Denver. But they're also, I, I just don't see. How, I mean, this is a, I mean, that's an emotional bet because when Tatum Celtics, drops fifty one, I think when you're and you looking at it, win it's by twenty four. It's because Denver and the Lakers is a much better matchup. So whoever wins that series might be the new favorite. 
I don't know if the Lakers would be favored over the Celtics in the series, but it's hard to just. What is go this? Like, the '80s? <laughs> I'm about to see a Lakers Celtics finals. <laughs> we had like, one. We had one recent, more recent. We had the Garnett and the, like that Lakers Celtics. You consider that more recent? <laughs> That's well, like 20 years ago. <laughs> more recent than the '80s. This is true. Yes, yes no, by math, I yes. do consider that. <laughs> that is actually that's factual. Um, but in any event, so the Cel- uh, Celtics and Heat series is going to be awesome. I think the Heat are actually going to uh, give them a run for their money, and I'm obviously pulling for the Heat because you know what better way to lose uh, your season to the future yeah, Eastern Conference champions? Rooting for the Celtics. Yeah, and I mean if you're unless you're from Boston and you're the barstool guys over there, uh, which by the way, great slow motion video of uh, Portnoy courtside. I think Tatum threw one up, and as soon as he threw it up, Portnoy went like this. Just like we didn't, they didn't know if it was going in or not. But when it when it splashed, it was a, a very cool visual. Um, on the West, we just saw the Lakers take care of business. We saw the Nuggets just completely. Yeah, you would think that that that, that was a dominant series. The Nuggets really played well, and Joker has played out of his mind, and we know that he's a walking triple double. So when you look at Joker and uh, and company against a Lakers team that, again, once they're hot, and him, AD, D'Angelo Russell, those guys, even the guys off the bench uh, were really fantastic last series. So when you look at that matchup, does LeBron have it? Does LeBron and that team have enough to take down the Joker? What a great matchup we're going to be seeing with, with Joe. I'm going uh, for it, but I don't know, man. You Well, you said you watched that one game. You're like, this team. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this team again beat. That's tough. In a seven-game series, is it going to be very I hard wonder, to beat that I, I team four times? I want to see how AD's going to hold up. This is just, like, Jokic is so good. And if there's one guy, look, LeBron's the best player in the world. But not really, because Jokic's the best player in the world right now. Mm. And I don't even, I actually, when I'm looking back at it. Strip the MVP from Embiid, by the way. Well, and give it to Joker. <laughs> I think they. Sh- I think Jokic should have won MVP. I'm not going to get into why he didn't mm. win MVP. Well, that's a, that's a lo- that's another layered. conversation for that's another layered. day. Maybe never. Maybe I'll never have that conversation, <laughs> yeah. honestly. You want to continue to talk on the air? You want to have that um, conversation? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to pick LeBron and the Lakers because I'm going to yeah. go with my heart. But realistically, I don't know, man. But Storytelling-wise. And, and AD is probably going to get hurt in game two. Story- <laughs> Storytelling-wise, um, a Lakers Heat finals would be cool considering what LeBron did for the Heat. Bubble. Rematch. Yes. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, but the Celtics, again, they're playing all world, so who knows? It's going to be to the point where, you know, um, he has to be on every single game. You can't expect AD to have 20 rebounds plus and, you know, go for the double-doubles that he's been doing. You just can't expect no, you, that. you can. You need to. Well, like, that's what you have to expect. And if they're going to win this series, that's what needs to happen. You said that there was a moment in the, the, the Lakers series where, was it AD that was playing Steph yeah. up top? Do you think AD just has to try to lock down the Joker? Like, well, that's the only. It's their only answer, really. I mean, LeBron. The one thing I'll say about AD, he can defend the perimeter well. I mean, as long as he's healthy, he's able to defend pretty much any position on the court. That's rare for a guy his size. Jokic runs the pick and roll better than anybody. It's tough to stop that. I don't care who you are. Um, you're not really defending Jokic on the block the entire time. He's mm. just he he runs the top of the key. They have this half court thing. The ball movement is so good, and their guys are cutting and slashing. They're all fast. You can't forget about the Michael Porter Juniors. Like, there's other guys on this True. roster that are very talented and that can score. So you can't worry only about Jokic because look what he's doing with the ball. He's averaging 13 assists a game. Guard him. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Guard him. That's all I'm going to say about that. You can't guard him because he's not. He's so unselfish that – you, you know, drop double team Jokic. Go ahead. He's yeah, gonna burn I was gonna you say that you're gonna have a time. lot of empty, empty space uh, to get the other guys. So, in any event, that is it. And that that series, I'm assuming I gotta go check out when exactly it goes started. You would think that you know it's the NBA, so they're gonna probably start in July. Um, at this point, it's uh, what's today? Uh, Monday's May 15th. Tuesday, Tuesday. So there we go. We got a series that starts tomorrow. I don't think there's anything tonight. No, nothing tonight. So tomorrow we'll we'll preview a little bit of the Lakers and the Nuggets game one. Uh, LeBron James averaging twenty eight and uh, twenty eight point nine. That's unreal. LeBron James. Who who would have thought the ageless one known as LeBron James? Uh, did you also check out over the weekend? Yes. Um, the XFL championship. No. No? I did not. Uh, congratulations to the Arlington Renegades for the first ever, or I can't say first ever, but the new regime, the new look XFL. Uh, Arlington Renegades started, I believe, their season uh, like three and five or something like that. They just didn't look good, and then they just made a run, got all the way to the playoffs, all the way to the championship. Uh, so congratulations to the Arlington Renegades. This this season proved to be a success. This, like I think, I'm you know, I, I know it's not on the mojo market or anything like that, but... 
you have to keep your eye out for guys that are being signed. And I want to give a special shout out to one Ben DiNucci, former Dallas Cowboy legendary backup quarterback who played for the Seattle Sea Dragons, got signed over the weekend by the Denver Broncos. So look, there's this opportunity that could be seized. And I think that, you know, is he going to give for us a run for his money? Probably not. But hey, listen, if he cooks himself out of Denver, you never know. Ben DiNucci. Eh, you never know. XFL, ladies and gentlemen. XFL. Uh, over the weekend, just real quick, with some baseball news. You know what I realized as I watched the Yankees four-game series over the uh, with the Rays? Which, by the way, they split. Which is very... It's it's encouraging. They split, to but say the way they, they could have... I mean, Judge was four feet away from tying last night, and I... I was sitting there with my father-in-law. I'm like, ah! I, when I tell you, but I got, battling, he got it. The Yankees he are got, they, was they showed me a lot this weekend. I'm happy with what I saw because they're fighting. And, they are. You know, they can scrap at least it all together. A little bit of life in the Yankees. But when I looked at that that lineup, top to bottom for the Rays, they're they're loaded. They have some real stars over there. Like the guys that have come up over the last couple of years. That their record is showing that they're that they're a really good baseball team. And I know they just put a pitcher on the. I think season-ending or 60-day uh, IL, so that that does alter things. Uh, but when you look at the Yankees top to bottom, getting Judge back in the lineup last week was great. Getting Bader back in the last week lineup was great. You're just kind of waiting on the health of Stanton. You're waiting on the health of all these guys that are supposed to be pitching for you. Rodon, don't know about you, man. Like, that's going to be weird. Next week— well, his wife came out and said, hold up. He's he's going to be pitching soon. They don't believe all the reports and say that's all BS. According, to, they had a, a little bit of a shotski. I think he took like a yeah, cortisone, cortisone shot. So shot. He's, so he might be back in there soon enough. Um, I do want to say that coming to Somerset is Luis Severino. So he's going to be doing a rehab start. So we'll get Severino back. So look, it's May. We all know it's the season's a very long one. There's a dog days of summer are coming up. Um, so just stay relevant. Stay relevant for a little while. Get your pieces back. Um, I can't say the same right now about the New York Mets, who got a great pitching performance out of Max Jersey yesterday and lost. So it's just like the bats are not coming alive for those guys. They're still two games under 500. This is not a knock the Mets show. This is just like, hey, man, what gives? You know, you spent all this money on pitching. Now they're pitching because Verlander had himself a decent outing the other day. Now Scherzer does the same thing. You don't want to fall into this, this uh, repeat cycle of having great pitching with no hitting because that was DeGrom's story in New York. Well, anytime, Never had any run support. Anytime any of these pitchers at this point in their careers have a couple rough starts in a row or even one, it's going to be, are they done? Because they're 39 and 40 or something like that. So Yeah, they're getting up there. Are the wheels going to come off? We're going to have to wait and see. I think the Mets will be fine as well. They're going to contend down the stretch, but they got to fix it soon. Same with the Yankees, though. They do have like, to. We went 2-2 two and two over the weekend. It wasn't like we... You know, no, but two and two over the stretch. weekend against the first place race. So it's wins like, and you know what's crazy? Losses are losses. The, the crazy part is, bro. Like the, the the last place team in the West. Did you see this by any chance? Did somebody posted in the Chop Sports Facebook group where the the order, the standings order, was in descending order from the AL East all the way through the Central. Like literally, last place Yankees, and then the first place team in the Central was a game behind the Yankees, and everybody else was in a row. So it's literally all in a row uh, between the, the East and the Central. But, again, long season. Let's not get crazy. Um, but you just want to continue to stay healthy or Joey get healthier. Gallo. Ripping the cover off the ball. <laughs> you know like what it is? Jackson. You let these guys grow beards or whatever they want to do with their facial hair and whatever they want to do with their hair. I also there's think something just, to it. He, there's something else, too. It's just that he sucks. And he gets hot at times, but he'll also go a month and a half without hitting. That's the why pitch. the Yankees acquired him originally. Like he got yeah. hot, and we're like, "Ooh, this guy could be yeah, good." Joey Gallo, beard or not, Joey Gallo, you suck. <laughs> so anyway, uh, fade Joey Gallo. Yes. So don't invest in Joey Gallo over the Mojo Market. You can find out all about what's going on at the Mojo Market uh, by following us on uh, all the social medias: TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. And of course, at Mojo is the way to do it. And join the Discord. That is a daily conversation happening. Um, so, look, a lot of NBA uh, talk today, obviously, because we have some uh, two conference finals to talk about throughout the course of this week. And then, obviously, as we move forward, we got some baseball coming up. Listen, football is in this weird period now where it's like mini camps are happening. There are some stories to cover. So, we'll do some of that throughout the course of this week, too, including um, not being able to see one. Uh, Bryce Young behind his offensive line, so that's that could be alarming. Yeah, he's we'll, we'll see. He's a little he's a little guy. Um, so anyway, for Dave Sturgeon, and Chris Gucci, this has been another episode of the Mojo Market Report. Have yourself a fantastic Monday. See you back here tomorrow.